everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J card class and this is number 5 out of 11 videos in our Stash Busting Sketches Share Your Love video series. And this video series is a great way to get through your stash, use what you love using sketches as a starting off place, providing a home for all those items that you have in your stash. And here is a look at today's sketch and this sketch features a sentiment edger. So the edger that I'm using is Penny Black's new forever edger. It comes with two pieces, the word forever and then the edger part which you can place anywhere on your card at any height to cut that edge which then your word forever will nestle into. Penny Black has a lot of different edger, word edger dies like this so if you just search our online store for edger you will get to see lots of different words. So this is a sketch you can use any time of year and I like to prep my sketch items in advance so I'm just giving you a look here at what I've prepped. I've cut that edger at different heights so some up higher and then some that are lower. It's just giving me some different options when I decide to work with this item. You can see that there how that just nestles in together and I keep everything in an envelope and I just crank through a whole bunch on my die cutting machine. Now all of the sketches included in this Share Your Love video series are put together for you in an ebook with a two page spread for each video. So you can easily see the sketch, product ideas for getting started. Like on this one, I list all of our different edgers on that first page. And in the second page shows card ideas. So you can see how you can explore and modify and work with that sketch. And I'll put a link for that down in the YouTube description box below. So now I'm going to work kind of assembly line style to create several cards using this sketch. So I'm starting with my stamping. I'm stamping onto Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. I'm stamping a variety of different stamps. This sketch works for whatever style you like. Those first two were stamped with Ranger Archival Watering Can ink. It's a waterproof ink. Here I'm using Memento in the color of Toffee Crunch which will give a little bit of a no line look and for a really light look on this stamp I'm using memento gray flannel ink so just showing you a variety of different styles and ink colors that you can use with the sketch so the sketches are really really versatile another thing I love about this particular edger this forever edger it comes with a um, builder sentiment set with like secondary sentiments on it and it's not just um, forever in love. They're not all love things so you can do forever friends, lots of different things with it and so again keeping it really versatile something that you can send throughout the year. So I'm going to now paint all of my stamping that I've done. I'm using Distress Ink Reinkers used as watercolors. That's what I have there on my palette. Off to the side you'll see I have a paper towel and just a cup of water. and I'm ready to begin painting. I love having things pre-stamped. You've seen this in lots of my videos so that whenever I have a minute I could just sit down and paint a little bit. So it's fun for me to work sort of in batches like this. I don't get bored but I can have approachable sort of segments or creativity, just little pieces of creativity that I can work into my day instead of just going card by card and um, sometimes that's hard for me to approach so this is how I like to create. Now I will link for you down in the YouTube description box below all of the supplies that I'm using. I will list like the colors of paint, everything that I'm using, the paper, the paintbrush, all of that will be listed for you. I will list and link all of the Penny Black products used. And then I also wanted to mention that I do have a video that shows a lot more in depth on my watercoloring technique and supplies. And so I'll list that for you too. So if you want a closer look at that, sort of a more instructional watercolor video, I'll link that for you as well. My typical approach is to pick up the reinker on my paintbrush, so it's just straight reinker, and put that down where I want the color to be the darkest. Then I will reach over with my paintbrush, rinse it off in water, and then pat that dry on the paintbrush and go back to the image to blend out that darker color. So you can get kind of a dark to light look. For these images though, they are so cute and so beautifully drawn, whether you do a lot of shading and dark to light or you do just a flat wash of color, they really will look nice on your finished card. I 
also am going to do a little bit of the background here. So I've dried everything and I'm just following that sort of same approach, putting down the color, rinsing off my brush, patting it on the paper towel so it's just a little bit wet, not too wet, and then going back and blending that color so it moves from a darker color to a lighter color. You could also color this with Copics or colored pencils. You could cut a mask and cover up the image and do inking for your background. There's just lots of different ways that you can use what you have and make it work for the sketch in a way that you like to create. Finally, I've grabbed a Pit Artist pen and an extra small journaling tip just to color in the eyes and the nose. So when I stamp this in that sort of charcoal, it's called watering can is the color, archival ink. I love that for like their fur and so that the image isn't stark black, but I do like to darken up the eyes and the nose just to give them a little bit more life. So I finished painting that. Here I'm gonna show you just how I do some of the painting on these roses, putting down that darker color and then blending it out. I'm working on sort of petals that are not close to each other. So wet paint will move wherever the paper is wet. So I don't want two sections right next to each other. That is when it will all start to bleed and blend together. Now if you don't want to do this detailed painting but you love this rose stamp, what I would recommend is just stamp it in a darker ink like that watering can ink or a black ink, even a gray ink. And then you can paint it and not have to do quite as much shading and the actual line art will do the work for you. But sometimes I like sort of the challenge and the look of this no line watercolor look which is what I went for on this card. If you're going to work on two sections that are near each other and you're worried about them blending together because they're both wet, you can use a heat tool to dry it in between. You can also go back like I'm doing here and darken up areas. You can see here where I'm just using my heat tool to dry that before I move on to another section. I really love this heart image. I think it's pretty as the main focal point on the card, but I also think you could stamp it in just a very light color and put it behind, like behind a critter, or just with a sentiment layered over the top of it. So sorry about my head peeking in there. <laughs> It would also be really beautiful like heat embossed with a gold or a silver. You wouldn't even need to paint it then if you didn't want to, but it would be pretty with some paint or coloring and the embossing. Another little tip is to leave the edges of the petals with some white and that will also help it look like it's unfolding and make it easier to see all of those layers. So if you look at my roses there, you will see the tips of many or most of the petals are white and that'll just give that illusion then of the depth and the layers of the petals. Next I'm moving on to the leaves. So I put down a little evergreen bough and then a little bit of forest moss distress ink reinkers. Like I said, all the colors are listed for you down in that YouTube description box below. Putting the color down where I want it to be darkest, rinsing off the brush and going back to blend. And then I'll just very lightly go over this. You could also use a fine tip marker or pen for this as well, for these sort of stems and loops. such a joy to paint this and I think it is just really pretty. So once I finished all of my painting, here is what I have. Some are kind of the background panels and they're that one I stamped on the part that has the edger die. I also stamped these guys and painted them in and fussy cut them out and I'm putting a little bit of Memento Toffee Crunch ink around the edges to hide any imperfections in my fussy cutting. So with this edger die, you can see lots of variety in different kinds of images and image placement. 
Now here I have some die cut elements. You can see the word and also some butterflies. I've just put them onto some blue painter's tape to hold them in place and make them a little bit easier to ink. I'm using an ink blending tool and a foam pad to do that. So now we'll begin working on this background. I'm going to use some Memento Toffee Crunch ink with an ink blending tool with a foam pad starting off the edge and working my way on mostly towards the bottom just to create some variation from the Forever Edger which you can see there and the background. So the Forever Edger part will be popped up and be bright white while this will have that sort of Toffee Crunch inking on the background but I don't want to press too hard on the part that I have painted so just a very light touch mostly emanating or coming out from this bottom left hand corner. I'm going to add a little tone on tone stamping there too just to add some weight to this side of the card. I felt like that just balanced things off a little bit so I've grabbed this um, postage from our posted stamp set and I will stamp and ink that with that same Memento Toffee Crunch that I used to ink the background. And I like to start light and just build up the color to the intensity that I want by repeatedly stamping it in the stamp positioning tool. And this is a nice way to make basically any shaped image work with the edger die set like that forever edger. Here is forever in my heart and I'm just adding that secondary sentiment stamping from the forever builder stamp set. Now I like a little extra depth for the word so I've just cut it twice and I'm gluing two together. It's really nice in real life if you haven't tried this before um, once you do it's hard to stop <laughs> but I do really like the look of two of them together. And I'll put some liquid adhesive and then you can see how easily and perfectly that fits with the Forever Edger. It's such a fun die set and like I said Penny Black has a lot of different words and builder sets for the secondary sentiments that go with them. So if you love this sketch there's lots of different words that you can use for it. So I will just pop that up. All of these cards are four and a quarter by five and a half inches, so a standard size card. I wanted to pull that purple of the word forever up a little bit into the rest of the card design and add a little extra dimension. So I'm just doing that with some die cut butterflies, which you saw inked in the same color as I did that word forever. And I'll add a couple self adhesive pearls. And that card is complete, but stay tuned, I'll show you more. So here's just a still shot at that card. Picks up the color a little bit better than the lighting I have for my filming. Now we'll go ahead and come back to that teddy bear card. So here I'm going to stamp that again onto some Eclipse masking paper, which is just like a giant sticky note that comes on a roll. And I've cut out that just to cover up these images. Now I can do inking on the background or stamping on the background and that will mask over them. This is Penny Black's heartstring stamp. This is one from my stash. I really like it for just a soft sort of background. I'm going to ink that with I believe it's Viridian ink but I'll have it listed down for you below and it's just a really nice tone on tone look. Just a little extra something I felt like to finish off this sort of scene of these cute bears standing there. And I'll peel off that mask and I'll save it. I'll just put it right on top of my um, stamp packaging to store. But I did decide to just darken up this bottom part, sort of ground it down into that forever edger a little bit more. So I put the mask back on and use my ink blending tool with a foam pad. I've got my sentiment and I'm adding a little memento toffee crunch down here at the bottom. I stamped that with my secondary sentiment 
and I'm adding it to the card, which I could then add this to my actual card. So it's just working on a panel that I can add to the actual card. So here is a still shot of that. I just love those bears. I think they're so, so sweet. And again, that Forever Edger just really finishes off the card. You can grab any type of image to work with it. So here is a look at all of the cards I made with this sketch and different variations of the sketch. These are the two I did on camera for you, and then I have a couple more. Here's the one with those fussy cut hedgehogs. So you can tuck in little critters behind the word. I added a die cut there in the background. And then here is where I've moved that forever edge up towards the top and did stamping and painting down below. Also before you go, this is a reminder that this video is part of a series of sketches created to help you bust through your stash. So if you'd like to see how I did all of my preparation and my setup for my stash and my sketch boxes, it's a really helpful system for getting in there and using what you love and using these sketches. I'm going to link that video down below for you in the YouTube description box below. This actually ended up being my favorite card with this sketch. Probably the other Heart Roses is my second favorite. I would love to know what is your favorite. And if you've ever used our edgers below, edgers, let us know in the comments section below. We love reading your comments and all of your feedback. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't mix, miss the next video in this series. Thanks for watching.